Well, hello there. Welcome to History 17A, the online version, or History 310, the online version, depending on what college you attend. I'm going to do a generic version of this video for five different courses uh, at a number of different colleges, so uh, some things may not completely fit your class. Uh, one of the reasons why you should uh, follow my instructions, the first one you see there, underneath the big giant blue title, please read the syllabus in full. It's long and boring, which it is, uh, but you want to know all of the class entails from day one, uh, especially uh, considering what I just said, that uh, some of the things uh, in this video might not be exactly the same uh, as in your 17A or 310 course. Uh, so, welcome everyone. I've sent out a welcome uh, letter and a welcome video. How many more times and ways can I welcome you guys? Uh, <laughs> but nonetheless, uh, I hope we have uh, a decent, if not better, time of it. Uh, I know I will. Uh, I love uh, teaching uh, this uh, uh, course and love teaching this subject. Uh, hopefully, uh, you won't find it uh, uh, too much of an imposition to study it on the other end, uh, and hopefully you'll study it well. Uh, I'm certainly going to try to help you in that regard. Uh, please find the complete uh, actual syllabus uh, either on the home page, uh, in files, or in modules. It should be there uh, in uh, all three of those places right now, so there are multiple ways to access it. Uh, this uh, presentation itself will remain uh, available uh, on modules uh, uh, under introduction or introductory materials on modules as well. So if you want to go back and look at that uh, in lieu of looking at the syllabus, keeping in mind that uh, it doesn't match up completely, depending on which class you're in. Uh, that's another way that you can come back to anything you forget. Uh, it will be there the entire summer or entire semester. What follows is a generic version uh, that may not include samples from your specific section. I started reading that without realizing I just said it. Uh, so uh, a little repetition never hurts on the first day. The basics, uh, Sierra College, or uh, fill, in, fill in your college, uh, History 17A or 310. Either way, it's U.S. History to 1877, the online version, uh, uh, of course, uh, as well. Uh, and this is the uh, course uh, syllabus uh, for summer uh, 2020 or later. <laughs> as you can see, I, I might use this uh, again. Uh, if all goes well. My name is Professor Professor Christian Jardine, uh, but you can call me Professor Christian Jardine. No, you can call me Mr. Jardine or uh, something uh, of that nature. Uh, your Highness, uh, uh, Your Excellency, I answer by any of those. I'm going to hold uh, an off sour by appointment uh, on ConferZoom on Tuesday uh, from the confines of my luxurious home between 9 and noon. And the other four days uh, of uh, the week, uh, excluding the weekend, uh, you can uh, contact me uh, in one of the uh, uh, you know, many ways uh, uh, without, uh, on kind of a drop-in basis, uh, in the same hours. So Tuesday through Friday, 9 to 12, you can send me an email on Canvas, a regular email. Uh, you can leave a voicemail, which you see the number there, Confer Zoom. Uh, that can even be done uh, ad hoc uh, outside of the uh, the office hour uh, uh, again that you have to make an appointment for. So you can uh, you get a hold of me a number of ways uh, in uh, sort of a number of uh, methods. Student responsibilities. Oh my God, you guys have a lot to be responsible for there. Uh, so uh, not only is there a syllabus. And this is kind of a version of the syllabus, a truncated video version of the syllabus. Uh, but there's a syllabus quiz, uh, which I'll leave open. Uh, you can find it under quizzes on Canvas uh, all week long. You can take it uh, up until Sunday night, I, I believe, at 11.59 p.m. Uh, it's just five multiple choice questions worth 10 points to give you in some, some incentive uh, to read and, in a sense, kind of study the syllabus to commit some things to memory so that you have a better uh, grounding foundation uh, of the basics uh, for this course. Uh, get readings and assignments done on time uh, uh, and in time to prepare for exams properly. I'm not absolutely opposed to accepting late assignments. 
but it's not a good idea. Uh, I'll usually grade them down, uh, half credit or something, uh, and you need to have good reason. So uh, it's important, especially I think in an online class, uh, to really kind of keep your P's and Q's in order, be diligent uh, on staying on top of the deadlines. It's hard not to on Canvas because it gives you so many reminders. It's like my mom just constantly nagging me uh, uh, and reminding me of things again and again and again. But for that reason, it sh there's not too many excuses uh, to, to miss deadlines. I'm saying there are none, but there aren't too many. Uh, I'm going to give everyone a 72-hour uh, window to take uh, our scheduled exams, which we'll talk about uh, later on. Uh, so uh, with 72 hours, nobody really has an excuse that I didn't have time to take it. Uh, if you don't have time to take it the first day, take it the second day. If you're working you know, all night long after a day's classes on the second day, take it the third day. Uh, I'm assuming everyone can find a small window uh, of uh, half an hour, that's all they're going to take, uh, to uh, fit something in in a three-day period. We're going to do uh, two web-based assignments. Uh, it says four there. I'm sorry, that's a, a misprint. Uh, we're going to do, I used to do four. We're going to do two uh, that uh, are divided into two parts. I mean, each one is divided into the same two parts. There'll be a discussion portion of the web-based assignment where you'll uh, uh, talk to and with uh, other members of your group uh, about the same assignment. Uh, uh, a website that I'm a historical one that I'm sending you to uh, to peruse uh, and investigate uh, and then the second part of, of the uh, assignment or each assignment uh, is to turn in uh, written answers to questions that I'm going to pose uh, and uh, they'll be up on canvas sometime soon more on that uh, uh, in a later date uh, th those uh, will be due about three weeks three and a half four weeks into the class and then at the very end of the class for the second one uh, participate in class if you want a, uh, a chance to uh, boost your grade at the end of the course. How the hell can you participate in an online class? Well, we'll be doing uh, some things live a little bit, uh, but uh, uh, more on that later uh, as well. There's other uh, methods for doing so. You should regularly check Canvas. Uh, you should uh, be checking in, I don't mean every five minutes, but uh, wouldn't be a bad idea even to do it on a daily basis. Certainly a few times uh, a week, three or four times a week at a minimum. Uh, since this, uh, I mean, that's true of even an on-ground course these days, but online uh, only, uh, it makes, uh, uh, it's even more imperative. So, so you know what's going on, what's coming up, what you might have missed. You check the calendar, uh, all right? Uh, all, again, the, the multiple reminders in multiple places that they give you. Uh, you can look for announcements uh, from me this way. Uh, if you're on Canvas a lot, again, it's hard to miss things, hard to miss deadlines, hard to miss any sort of uh, ad libs that I have to call. I have to uh, change uh, something around, a date for something, which I don't like to do, but sometimes it, uh, you know, it's uh, unavoidable. It's your responsibility to keep up with your progress in the class. But if you take the initiative, I will certainly assist you in this and meet you halfway or part of the way. Make your best effort to work hard. Uh, think carefully and critically, uh, analytically about all assignments, activities in the course. Uh, critical thinking skills, uh, ability to reason, think logically, go a long way in a college course uh, or college history course more specifically. You should also, uh, I shouldn't have to say this, most of you don't need it said, but uh, I must put it down in writing anyway. You must conduct yourself in class and online uh, with the requirements of the college, uh, with a professional demeanor as expected in any college course or on any college campus. This includes treating your classmates as well as the instructor with respect. Avoid biting or sarcastic comments aimed at anyone. Uh, we want to interact in a way that has all of us treating each other uh, with the respect that each of us and all of us deserve. Uh, uh, the Netiquette website that some of you are probably already familiar with is a valuable resource to get tips on acceptable conduct in an online assignment class uh, like the web-based ones uh, uh, that we'll be doing here. Uh, also, lastly here, uh, you should make uh, an effort to stay in pretty regular contact uh, with the instructor, that being me, so that both of you or us uh, know where you stand in the course. So uh, if you start to kind of fade away and don't keep in contact, you're not turning in assignments, uh, that's going to be that's going to be a problem. So uh, if you have to miss assignments, if you have to miss time, 
uh, you know, and assignments, uh, uh, be straight up with me, contact me, let me know what's going on, uh, and then it probably won't be a problem. Uh, but if you let things slip and slide uh, and don't keep an open line of uh, communication, then things can get difficult for you. Uh, and I don't want to see that happen. So keep that one in mind. You can always come back to these, of course, so uh, this will be available. Course description. Man, uh, that's a lot. Uh, I should have divided it up a little bit more, spread it out a bit more, I suppose. Uh, but uh, I'm going to read this one. Uh, the course is a survey of U.S. history from pre-Columbian Native American cultures. And Okay, I'm done. No, uh, I'm not going to read the whole thing because uh, if you look at the welcome video, I cover most of this ground there. But uh, it wouldn't be a bad idea. Uh, uh, it would be a good idea for you to read this, since I told you to read the syllabus in full. And this is verbatim uh, in the syllabus. I'm giving you most of the syllabus here, uh, but there are some things uh, that I don't have room for or time for. Student learning outcomes. Uh, uh, I'll go through these. Uh, they'll come up again. Uh, I'll, you know, at one time or another, come back to uh, these uh, uh, one at a time, or sometimes. Uh, uh, a number of them at once, uh, but this is what, uh, uh, in part, what you're supposed to uh, come out of the class mastering or understanding, uh, knowing, uh, or having the ability to do, uh, analyze uh, the role of geography in the economic and political development in America uh, and its place in a global context, uh, be able to compose coherent, persuasive historical argument uh, using correct academic citation methods, Differentiate primary and secondary sources and how each are used to make historical claims. Something we'll certainly uh, uh, get into a lot uh, as we go forward. Investigate major political, economic, and social changes in the United States with the emphasis on the roles of racial and ethnic minority groups. Something else that will uh, be happening uh, uh, unit after unit. Uh, and lastly, investigate the origins of the American Constitution and its impact on American cultural developments with emphasis on race, class, gender, or ethnicity. Uh, this is something uh, that naturally follows uh, in this class as well. So uh, I will have uh, opportunity uh, to come back to these, and you can go back to them as well. They do kind of offer good uh, guidance and kind of grounding uh, to go forward, uh, try to put this... Uh, you know, cornucopia of information and knowledge will be taking in, uh, to, into some kind of coherent structure uh, and pattern so you can understand it. The textbook uh, and some important notices along with it. We only have one textbook. Thank me later. Buy me a nice uh, gift uh, at the end of the term. Uh, the one and only book, though it's required, uh, is The American Promise, Volume 1, by James Rourke et al., so we only have one uh, book. Uh, there are no other uh, assigned readings uh, in the course. Uh, it's, of course, understood, uh, or uh, you need to understand that you need to have an access to, access to a computer in one way or another. If you don't own one, uh, a computer lab or, or something uh, with a high-quality Internet connection, otherwise uh, you probably won't be able to do this or do it effectively. As far as day-to-day -day activities are concerned, uh, we're going to meet once a week on ConferZoom. Uh, more on that, details uh, uh, later. Uh, two PowerPoint lectures, units, chapters, kind of all one thing per week. Uh, actually, two and sometimes three, uh, I should say. Uh, uh, and one mini-exam per week. Uh, they're kind of like quizzes. I call them mini-exams. Uh, two web-based assignments, about three weeks for each one, three and a half weeks for each one, uh, depending. That include regular group discussions that I already mentioned, uh, and a two-page uh, individual paper or actually answers to questions. Uh, and class participation uh, uh, that can come uh, either in the conference Zoom meetings uh, or in another way, other ways. Uh, uh, again, I'll explain uh, as we go along. Uh, all due dates, uh, all scheduled assignment dates are subject to change. I promise I won't move anything forward on you. Uh, it's uh, uh, sometimes a matter of moving things backward uh, a little bit if uh, something happens that trips uh, uh, you or I or the class up. Uh, so we can't predict the future. So I do make that disclaimer, though I try my best to keep the dates, uh, due dates, exam dates, uh, right where they are from the beginning. Course calendar, uh, this is just the first two weeks. 
uh, again, it's just too much space, too much time. Uh, but uh, the rest of it, again, is in the syllabus, uh, already uh, at your fingertips uh, on Canvas. So, but the, the all the material is structured like this. So under week one, uh, you see the the uh, next to week one, you see the dates, uh, the whole week. Uh, then the units that we're going to cover in bold print uh, and the chapters. So a unit called Ancient America before 19, 1492 that corresponds with chapter one in our textbook. Uh, the next unit uh, in week one, Europeans Encounter the New World, uh, uh, our uh, Rourke book, chapter two. Uh, homework assignment uh, uh, also due uh, on 6 uh, 13 and then on to the next week. Uh, you see at the end, at the bottom of the second week, uh, our uh, uh, first uh, mini exam uh, is, is is there. Actually, I think there might be one after week one. That might have been a uh, a misprint, and I moved it uh, too late. <laughs> uh, anyway, uh, let's double ch let's double check that I need to give you wrong information on my uh, syllabus video, but. Uh, uh, just check, just check that. I think there's one after week one. I'm pretty sure. It it may depend on the class you're in. That's probably what it is. Uh, that there might be one or two classes where there's an exam after the first week. The rest of them I don't, uh, or there isn't after the first week. Most of them there are. Uh, I'm really making a hash out of this, aren't I? Uh, so syllabus available in all those places you see above again. Monday morning cyber gatherings. So. Uh, every Monday morning, uh, we're going to meet uh, in real time uh, uh, via uh, uh, CyberZoom uh, or uh, ConferZoom. I might as well call it CyberZoom. Uh, and uh, we can converse in real time then. Of course, we could do it through appointments. Uh, uh, right? Uh, I told you I'm going to have ConverZoom open where you can make an appointment and uh, uh, talk to me, kind of teleconference one-on-one. -on -one. But uh, once a week on Monday mornings, uh, we'll be doing it as a class. Uh, I am going to give you uh, three points of extra credit uh, every time you attend uh, one of those. So uh, 18 points uh, you know, will add up. Uh, uh, so you probably won't want to miss them for that reason. But even if you don't need the extra credit points, uh, the uh, attendance there, uh, paying attention, uh, it's, uh, it, it's we're starting off a new week every time. And so I will, you know, be going over, giving you feedback from what we've already done the previous week, uh, and setting into place kind of what uh, you know some uh, guidance uh, for the upcoming week. So uh, I'm kind of setting the table for you there, uh, uh, week by week, uh, and in a way that'll help keep you on track. It'll help, uh, I think, uh, uh, keep you uh, more likely to sort of feel like uh, I know where we're going. I know what's going on. I'm not bewildered by what's expected or you know, what's going on in, the, in this class. So I would make an effort to, uh, to uh, uh, get to that, uh, uh, get to the computer. Now, of course, uh, I've picked uh, what to you is an arbitrary uh, hour, uh, Monday morning, 11 and 12. Many of you have another class or are working. Uh, I get that. So uh, these will all these meetings will all be recorded, uh, and they'll be put on Canvas as well. Uh, and as long as you watch it uh, and get back to me uh, with some questions or some comments about it that you know make it clear that you did uh, uh, you know watch it uh, like you were there uh, live, uh, then and, and do so within 24 hours, uh, then I'll give you the points anyway. So I won't be discriminating against uh, someone that can't uh, make the live uh, uh, cyber uh, gathering, uh, you know, because they can't help it. Uh, uh, they were at work or something. Uh, everyone will have the chance. But you do need to send me an email within 24 hours uh, showing me uh, that you listened to it, uh, watched it, uh, and understood what was being said. And you can even ask questions, uh, anything about uh, you, uh, you know, don't understand. Uh so even if you don't need the extra credit points, as I said, uh, I would strongly recommend that you attend uh, when you can and when you can't uh, to uh, watch the uh, the recorded version of it. Uh, it will uh, help keep you sort of in the right direction on the straight and narrow path. Homework. Yuck. Who likes to do homework? Uh, there are six or seven, again, different... Uh, numbers, different classes. Uh, classes. Some classes are going six weeks, some seven, some eight. So uh, this one might not specifically fit your class. Check your own syllabus. Uh, but there are several homework assignments. Let's put it that way. From our main text, 
Uh, each is worth six or seven points, uh, 42 points in all. Uh, several specific chapters have been selected as assignments, uh, so make sure you check on Canvas to assure you're doing the right chapter for that particular numbered homework assignment, number one through six, number one through seven. Uh, so uh, since I'm not going to be doing all the chapters, you might homework three might be chapter nine or five. So make sure you uh, look carefully at what uh, is uh, being assigned. Um, each homework is to be uh, two double-spaced pages. Uh, I'll actually say one and a half double-spaced pages. Uh, submitted online uh, by the due dates that they'll be listed on Canvas, uh, in, in modules, uh, other places uh, you can find them. All I'm looking for on homework assignments uh, is two th simple things. One, that you write at least uh, uh, one and a half to two pages. Uh, and the chapter uh, is clearly uh, uh, and concisely and logically summarized. So the assignment is to summarize the chapter uh, in like uh, uh, one and a half to two pages. It actually says one to one and a half to two pages. So anywhere between one and two is fine. Uh, I don't want you to go under, and you know I don't really want you to go over either. Uh, this is an uh, exercise to some degree in concision. So uh, I want you to organize your thoughts uh, and your ideas uh, and sort of summarize the chapter uh, in a way uh, that uh, is sort of logically uh, sound, well organized, etc. A good way to ascertain whether you have achieved this is to say to yourself, hypothetically, if I were to give this summary to a classmate to help them study this chapter, would this really be of use to them? So if you have one, say, full page, uh, and uh, you look over it and say, if, you know, let's say somebody did ask you for help, and you say, here's what I'll do. Uh, I'll go through and I'll write a summary of the chapter for you, uh, and I'll, I'll give it to you, and you can maybe it'll help you study. If you look at your assignment after you finished it and ask yourself, would this actually help somebody study? If your answer is, not really, <laughs> there's not much here, uh, then you probably won't get uh, uh, any points or many points for it. If you're confident, and you're right to be confident, if you are, uh, that, yeah, this would help somebody study for sure, uh, then you'll probably get the full points. So if you do those things, uh, you should be able to get the full points, whether it's six or seven, uh, uh, for each assignment. Uh, after your online submissions, I'll record your score uh, out of six as soon as reasonably possible. I tend not to make comments unless there's something that needs to be corrected. I'm not trying to be negative, not give you uh, a pat on the back here and there, but uh, I think I have a lot to grade. Uh, and uh, uh, if you don't get any comments and you get a perfect score, uh, you can assume correctly uh, that you did everything well. Uh, keep doing it that way, uh, and you'll keep getting full points and probably no comments. You only get comments if there's something I think you need to correct. The homework due dates uh, will be up on modules uh, uh, soon. Uh, I'm recording this first, but I'll probably do that immediately after I finish recording this. So look for those uh, uh, soon. So by the by, uh, tomorrow uh, uh, we will know. You'll know uh, all the due dates uh, uh, for the homework assignments uh, from uh, the first week to the last. Mini exams. Uh, there are seven or six uh, mini exams, uh, depending on which class you're in. Uh, if you uh, in one of the classes that uh, there are seven mini exams, I actually drop your lowest score, uh, and so uh, it, it, it's, it ends up being six that are graded. There are uh, fifteen multiple choice questions uh, on each mini exam. Uh, each question is worth three points, so for a total of forty-five uh, points for each mini exam. So six graded mini exams, forty-five po uh, points each. Uh, 270 points possible for all six exams uh, uh, combined. So the, don't be fooled by the 15 multiple choice questions. That's a small, uh, uh, easy to take, quick exam. I give you half an hour for each one, 15 questions in a half an hour. You have to hustle a little bit, but it's you know plenty, plenty of time. If you have DSPS, uh, you know, uh, uh, needs, uh, you give me the form uh, and uh, uh, you know, we can make those arrangements for extra time, whatever you need. But you do have to have the documentation. So, but the, don't be fooled by the 15 multiple choice questions. These exams are user friendly uh, in time. It doesn't take you much time to do. I don't like to spend a lot of time uh, on exams or you know, have students have to spend too much time on them. 
Uh, from my experience, uh, and uh, other professors might have different experience, I've found over the years that no matter how many questions uh, I asked, uh, the same students tend to get the, the A's, the B's, and the C's. Uh, whether you ask 15 questions or 15 million questions, uh, it ends up being the same. So I prefer to ask less uh, and move on to uh, other things. Uh, but what can be misleading about the 15 multiple choice questions for each exam, which makes them all look small and puny, like a little quiz, is that they come from a study guide, each one, uh, that has lots of terms, way more than 15 terms. So you don't know which uh, terms from the study guide, of course, I'm going to ask questions on. So you have to study the whole study guide. You know, uh, and 15 of those terms uh, you know, will show up on the, uh, the exam. So you take them online, uh, the due dates there, again, it's, there's a 72-hour window, as I said uh, earlier, uh, so uh, there'll be a, a start date uh, and a, a final date within three days of each other, uh, and as long as you go online, uh, click start, take 30 minutes in that 72-hour uh, period, uh, you're good. Uh, you'll be able to see your scores immediately, uh, the ones you missed right away. Uh, the the exam structure uh, is the same on every single one. Uh, so, uh, in all multiple choice questions, the there's no midterms. There are no finals in this class. Uh, the only tested material, only tests you'll be taking are the mini exams. That's it. Uh, but I want to make it clear. This is why I call them mini exams and not quizzes. Over the years, I've found that we have different emotional reactions to different words. I mean, I knew that already, but in education, uh, in college, uh, I learned that uh, is true as well. So students, when they hear the word quiz, uh, it's more casual. So if a student, I've heard this before, uh, just walking down the hallway. Uh, if a student says, what, there's a there's a quiz today? Ah, uh, you know, I, I forgot. I didn't even study at all. Oh, well, uh, right. That's not that big of a deal. Not every student thinks that way. But uh, that's what. But nobody uh, is in the hallway talking to students about to go into a class. And, what? There's an exam. There's a midterm today. Uh, what? There is. Uh, no, people will freak out uh, when they hear that. So I call it a mini exam, but it's a small exam. But it is an exam, uh, and uh, the lion's share of the points in the class are here. Uh, on the mini exams, all uh, you know, told to 270 points. So if you don't do well on the, the mini exams, you're not likely to do well on the class. You can make up for it by doing excellent on everything else, but this is where most of the points are in the in the whole class. So I call the mini exams not to give you a heart attack, but so you understand the gravity uh, of what these uh, small looking exams uh, actually is. Uh, Questions on the exams will come from terms in the relevant study guides provided on Canvas. Look for those in files. Uh, there's one study guide for each unit. Uh, just lists of terms uh, that uh, if the term is there on the study guide, uh, a question on that term uh, is fair game. On average, there are two or three, depending on which class you're in, study guides per exam. Uh, again, uh, I put them on Canvas as they become relevant. I don't put them all up at first because it becomes just way too much material to have to look through. So I put uh, materials up kind of as needed, unit by unit, week by week. Uh, from those underlying study guide terms, uh, uh, you should study your lecture notes, PowerPoints, PowerPoint lectures, uh, right? The, the notes that you take, and you should take notes. Uh, uh, from the PowerPoint lectures, maybe even the textbooks, at least highlight the textbooks and go back and study it. Uh, so you should know the underlying terms cold uh, from all of these sources. Uh, I won't be uh, spending much, if any, uh, class time going over each exam. You have the, uh, you'll have the answers there for you, at least briefly. Uh, but you feel free to email me or talk to me in some way. Uh, uh, I say after class, uh, but uh, you know, online or something. Um, if you have questions, I can I, I can easily call up your exam and go over it question by question with you. Break it down uh, if you uh, feel the need. And some uh, every semester, some students do. That's perfectly fine. That's why I'm saying this. Uh, but I won't be going over them. Uh, you know, in general, uh, every time it, it'll be on uh, uh, request only. Uh, so none of this. Uh, Mini-exam stuff includes comprehensive tests, midterms, finals. 
Seven mini exams or six are the only tests in the course, just so we're clear. Collaborative web-based assignments. Holy moly. Okay, I'm not going to read all of this. Uh, that looks forbidding even to me. Uh, let's just, you should read this, and this is, ta is taken directly from the syllabus, the written version. But there are two parts to it. Uh, uh, one, group discussion board. Uh, and if you go through this, you see uh, exactly how many posts, comments you need to make, uh, over what time span, how you're kind of supposed to do them. Uh, I, I may uh, go into this more later on, since the first one of these isn't due until about midway into the class. Uh, we have a little bit of time, so I'll give you some more guidance on this. Uh, but you should look at the uh, instructions, uh, collaborative web-based instructions, uh, assignment one uh, and assignment two, uh, also in files. Uh, it has the questions there, uh, what, what, the, what the website is, the link to the website, uh, etc. Uh, by the final due date for each one of these two, uh, again, about three weeks apart from each other, you are responsible uh, for uh, turning in answers to five questions that I've asked. I've asked, asked five, same five questions to everybody, and uh, you answer the five questions, not in essay form, you answer just one, two, three, four, five. But each uh, paragraph, uh, or each answer should be uh, about a paragraph long, chock full uh, of, uh, uh, you know, information, insight, knowledge, uh, reasoning, uh, and you need to make it abundantly clear that you looked at the web website, uh, you looked at the evidence, evidence and or sources on the website, and your answers are, are you know, coming from uh, the evidence sources uh, that you gleaned, uh, uh, the conclusions you drew from them on uh, the website. So the part one of each one of these assignments, the discussion in, is a collaborative uh, uh, effort. Uh, I don't give everyone in the, the group the same score. Uh, depends on your uh, you know input, uh, so you don't have to worry about that. Uh, but that part of it is collaborative. Also, if you happen to be the only person in your group that's doing a responsible job, you still don't have to worry. Uh, I, I won't let your grades suffer because of it. You do your posts. You do your uh, thing. Uh, if there's nobody's nobody, it does happen once in a while where one person is the only one who posts. Uh, then instead of five posts, two comments, just make seven posts, uh, seven good ones, uh, and uh, you'll be fine. It's unfortunate that that happens, that there are uh, people that don't uh, live up to the end of the bargain, because it makes the experience, even for uh, the one or two or few uh, that do the work, uh, less valuable, uh, and you get sort of less assistance, less chance to interact uh, with your peers. Uh, uh, so it'll be unfortunate if you're in one of those groups, but your grade won't suffer because of it if you do uh, your job. Uh, so part one is collaborative, uh, a collective assignment that you get an individual grade. Part two uh, are written answers that you do individually uh, without uh, you know, the rest of the group uh, involved. They do their own answers. You can certainly, as it says here, uh, uh, talk about something, uh, uh, write about something in your answers uh, that you learned uh, online or in the discussion groups. Uh, I will read this part. Uh, in our group, Bob pointed out that blah, blah, blah. And though I hadn't uh, thought of it before, it got me to go back and look and not only to see what I had missed, but I also noticed blah, blah, blah. I'm quoting directly from the screen. Uh, so uh, that actually is a good idea. It shows that you did collaborate with your group and you did learn something uh, uh, you know, from others, uh, uh, not just yourself. Because again, it's a collaborative web-based assignment, uh, or two of them. Uh, so uh, each one is a different historical website. The links are in the, the assignment uh, instructions themselves. So you click on the link. It takes you right to the website. Um, the part one, the discussion board part, uh, is worth 15 points, the collaborative part. Uh, and the, the second part is worth 35 points, the written answers to the questions. Uh, I will monitor discussion board activity. Uh, I may interject a comment here or there, but I don't do so too often. Uh, once in a while I do, uh, if I feel the need, uh, either to kind of spur you along uh, or to say, hey, that's a uh, that's an excellent uh, you know, train of thought you guys have going there. Uh, uh, keep keep it up look into, or look into it more. I want to clarify this because uh, of all uh, of the assignments uh, in our class, this is the one that tends to bring the most confusion. So there are two separate web-based assignments about three weeks apart. There are 
web-based uh, assignment instructions for assignment one, uh, and you know, second web-based assignment instructions. Uh, and there's two different websites for each one. There are uh, five questions for number one that are different than the five questions for uh, number two, uh, the, the second one, because uh, they're different subjects, uh, different uh, time periods and places, uh, uh, historical uh, issues. Uh, so uh, you need to uh, look at each one, one at a time. Yeah, again, have about three, three and a half weeks to do the first one, uh, and uh, same for the second one. Uh, so uh, the posts you need to, to make, again, you can look at this on your own. Uh, I will say uh, uh, this part of it, uh, as you can see here, in the last two days of each assignment, the uh, discussion board, before the written part is actually due, the discussion board will be closed down. Uh, so you have to get in all your comments uh, before uh, that sort of uh, uh, two-day, uh, uh, you know, uh, pre-turn-in uh, period. The reason being that some students do things incredibly late and they do all of their posts uh, at the last minute uh, and then they're not really collaborating with the group, not at all, because their whole group is finished. They've already done all their comments. They've already written their answers. They've already turned them in and submitted them. Uh, and so no one on the, in the group may even see uh, your uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, comments, uh, your posts. Uh, and that's an essential part of the assignment. So you've got to get them in uh, before uh, two, you know, 48 hours prior uh, to the uh, when the written part of the assignment is due. The second part of each assignment, again, the five questions, full paragraph in length. The answer should display understanding, acquired knowledge through examination of the evidence on the website, uh, insight, critical thinking, reasoning, and most importantly, that you actually examine the evidence, primary sources on the website. So each answer should reference something or more found on said website. Just answering the question, uh, talking about an historical time period uh, that doesn't show me that you, you're actually looking at the website or you were you know, looking at the evidence there, uh, artifacts from our archaeological digs in one case, if you don't make reference to those, uh, it makes it look like, usually because it's true, that you didn't even really look at the, the website, you just tried to answer the, the questions on your own and wing it. That won't go well, all right? Uh, so each of the two links uh, can be found uh, in those instructions uh, that will be available in files uh, and modules. They're not up yet. They will be, uh, again, probably just after I finish this. I wanted to get this out to you before I finished up uh, the other uh, you know, uh, elements of the structure of the course. The discussion portion, uh, again, worth 15. The written portion worth 35 points. So uh, this is redundant, uh, but I simplified a little bit what I just said here. Uh, so again, this is the this is the assignment or assignments that get confused uh, the most. So you might want to come back to this or find it in the syllabus uh, and go back to it again and again if you need to. Class participation. How do you participate in an online class? Well, uh, there are the discussion groups, but you're already getting points for those anyway. So I'm not considering that class participation, at least in a formal sense, though it certainly is that. Uh, I give a potential, this is what we do. I give a potential participation boost to students that actively participate in the class uh, outside of the structured assignments. Those students that qualify, uh, and I I get to decide who qualifies. It's usually a you know, fairly small number or percentage of the whole class, but sometimes it's larger depending on you know, the uh, commitment that I get uh, uh, you know, from uh, the group. So, uh, but those who qualify, whether it's a larger number or smaller number, will get a full letter grade boost at the end of the term, at the end of the course, uh, to their grade, uh, if they're over halfway up to the next grade. Uh, for example, if you're Point total is sitting at 86%, which is a mid-range B, but you were uh, one that participated, uh, then uh, I will kick you up to A uh, instead of B uh, for your final grade. Now, if you're at 84%, then you don't qualify. And you, of course, don't know whether you'll be at 84 or 86%. Same, by the way, the same thing applies if you're at 76%. That moves from a C to a B. Uh, so wherever you are, if you're halfway up uh, and you participated, 
uh, uh, according to, to, to my uh, requirements, uh, then you'll, you'll you'll get this. But there's a 50-50 chance uh, that you will, uh, uh, you know, could, you could use this uh, because you don't know whether you're going to fall, uh, you know, in the 82%, 84, 86, 89. Uh, so uh, it's worth doing. Uh, to qualify, you must do two things. One, uh, send me an email on my in my Canvas inbox, Canvas e uh, inbox only, with at least a full paragraph email with questions, comments, thoughts about the current unit we're working on, uh, uh, meaning I must receive the email while we're still working on that unit slash chapter slash PowerPoint. I mean, within you know a number, a few days. Uh, the questions and comments must be about the subject matter of the unit only, not questions about like, hey, when's the next exam? You can certainly ask me those questions in the class. I'm here to answer questions like that, but you're not going to get participation uh, a credit uh, for that. If you do the above, uh, five out of the seven weeks of the course, so there's two weeks uh, where you don't have to do it, uh, but if you can do it five times, uh, then you, uh, uh, that's step one to qualifying. Step two uh, is to be among the top 15% of students in the class uh, logging the most time on Canvas. So those students uh, that uh, spend the most time on Canvas, I consider that uh, uh, to sort of go down as participation as well. In a sense, that part of it's uh, like commitment. So this is kind of class participation slash commitment to the class boost. Uh, but if you do both of those things uh, and you're halfway or more uh, to the grade, or a little more than halfway uh, or, or uh, more to the next grade up, uh, you will get that uh, uh, you know uh, round up. It could be a big round up. It's a great way uh, to make it more likely you get the grade that you want or need in the class. Now, students that come to me or write me in an online class. Uh, so I have to. I have to pass this class frantically. Uh, uh, or uh, sim similarly, I have to get an A in this class. Uh, people never have to get a B, uh, but people will say I have to get a uh, you know I have to pass means I have to get a C. A means I have to you know I have to get an A to keep my 4.0 going on. I get it in both cases, by the way. The have to get an A is saying I've got a 4.0 average. I'm trying to get into Stanford or Berkeley or UCLA. Uh, I have big ambitions. I want to I don't know. Uh, be the dictator of a small country someday or something. Uh, okay, I get it. I, I was like that too. I felt like I had to get A's in every class. People have put their own pressure on themselves, family pressure, whatever it may be. Uh, again, ambition. Uh, I get it. Uh, uh, I was that way. Uh, I have to pass your class is saying something slightly different. Uh, Ms. Professor Jardine, I have to, you know, get at least a C in this stupid crummy class to fit a GE requirement so I can move on to better, bigger and better things than your silly little history class. Fine. Fair enough. I can accommodate you either way. But uh, if you have to get a grade, you need to get uh, a passing grade or have to, uh, uh, you know, have to get an A in the class, then class participation, as I always say, is for you. It doesn't make it certain you get the grade you have to have or need, but it makes it more likely that you will. Introductory lecture slash quiz and syllabus quiz. Uh, you're going to want to watch the introductory lecture. It will be up soon uh, on modules uh, uh, introduction or introductory uh, section, segments, what I call it, introductory uh, forget now. Uh, uh, and take the five question uh, uh, quiz, uh, multiple choice uh, afterwards, pretty simple. Uh, and you'll get 10 points if you get them, all five of them right. Uh, so it's worth doing for that reason. But uh, it's not just that you're going to be tested on it, small number of points. And I'm correcting, I'm quoting myself here. A great deal of the concepts, terminology, methodology in the introductory lecture will come up again and again in the course. So you pay close attention, take notes, and even go back and look later on. You'll understand the lectures uh, and course material much better. So in a very indirect way, uh, uh, but uh, uh, an important one nonetheless, that part of it uh, will, will likely help your grade in the class as well. There's a syllabus quiz. So after you read the syllabus, you can go on, click Start, take another five question uh, worth 10 points total, Quiz, uh, it's pretty simple, but giving you some incentive to you know look through the syllabus uh, uh, more than just casually.
Again, both of these uh, quizzes will be available to take through the end of uh, the first week. Today's Sunday, uh, doing this. Uh, well, maybe not for you uh, later on. Uh, but uh, by the end of the week, uh, if you take it, uh, either one of these, both of these, uh, you're good to go. Extra credit. The extra credit uh, is a movie uh, to be watched on your own time at home. Uh, extra credit for watching a movie? Cool. Uh, well, that is if you like historical movies. If you don't, you'll have to just sit through it if you want the extra credit. And you can only do one extra credit assignment. This isn't like high school where you uh, you know, slough off for uh, almost the entire semester and then uh, turn in 33 extra credit assignments to pass the class. Doesn't work that way in college. So one extra credit assignment worth six points. Believe me, uh, it'll be worthwhile for uh, people. Some people in the class, not everybody. Uh, so, and I let you select the historically ba based film that you want to. It can be a good historical film, a bad one. But your assignment is to write a minimum two-page essay, double spaced, assessing the historical accuracy of the film and how well it captures the spirit of the time and place depicted. You know, I don't know, 17th century Great Britain. Uh, no, in this class, it'd have to be the United States, 17th century Virginia. Uh, I do not provide a list of films uh, overall. Uh, I'll probably give, I mentioned three here, just as you know, examples. Uh, you're free to ask me for suggestions as the course goes along. This isn't going to be due until the end of the class. Uh, so if you learn something by me at some point, uh, send me an email, let me know. Uh, I could tell you whether it's appropriate. It has to be a, an historically based film. It can't be a documentary. It has to have actors and actresses in it. Uh, and it needs to fit the parameters of our course. So it has to be U.S. history, uh, uh, n not after the Civil War, or not too far after the Civil War. So a movie about World War II is U.S. history, but it's not a subject that we cover or could cover in this class. So uh, it, you can't do that. It has to be something we either do or could cover uh, in this class uh, within uh, this course's uh, uh, chronological and uh, geographical parameters. The grade breakdown uh, is here for you to look at. Uh, I'm not going to belabor this, but it's certainly worth looking at because uh, from here you can strategize about what to prioritize. So, uh, you'd be amazed how many students don't do that uh, and they prioritize the wrong things and are surprised uh, when their grade doesn't turn out the way they wanted it to. Uh, I already told you that the mini exams uh, are where the lion's share of the points are. You can see that right here. So peruse that on your own time. Suggestions for success. This is a, a sampling from the actual syllabus. Uh, you are encouraged to take advantage of any campus support services uh, for maximum success in the course and college in general. I'm keeping this vague, but if you contact me, I can certainly give you uh, uh, some of those resources, uh, names of departments and uh, emails, etc., though they're pretty easy to find uh, on the uh, campus website uh, itself. To do well on the mini exams, skimming or reading the material once is probably not enough. Uh, some type of highlighting or note-taking system that allows you to go back and study the most important points is highly encouraged. Uh, so um, I can give you more points, uh, pointers on this later on. Uh, uh, I've already put up uh, a video, uh, a test-taking uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, hints on suggestions, test taking and study suggestions. That's already there. So some of this is already covered there, but uh, I might go into it uh, in some more detail later on with an announcement or another video later on. I don't want to oversaturate with you videos, but sometimes they're uh, easy ways to uh, for me to get information uh, to you. When you're watching, watching slash listening to PowerPoint lectures, it's more important to uh, write down what I say uh, than everything or anything on, on the PowerPoint slide or slides for two reasons. One, you can always go back and look at the PowerPoint lecture again or just the PowerPoint slides themselves. Both will be available. The PowerPoint lecture with my voice or just the PowerPoint slides without my voice. Uh, so you can go back and look later on and write stuff down from there. Uh, why do you have to do it when you're li listening to the lecture? Secondly, and probably more importantly, on most every slide, I say way more about the slide than the text that's written on that slide. So sometimes I have quotes, uh, sometimes I have noisy slides that have quotes and bullet points and lots of stuff on it other than pictures and maps, uh, but uh, especially then you don't try to write down everything because you can always go back 
That's why I sometimes load the slides a lot of things, so you can go back and study them. Uh, they're a, a study source, just like our textbook is. But the main point to number two is, if, let's say, the slide is George Washington, and it has his name and his dates of birth and death and a picture of him uh, and some you know, bullet points and some things uh, you know, that he did, uh, why he's significant in history, blah, blah, blah. And I read those, but I leave that slide up there and talk about George Washington for like 15 minutes. And what's written on the slide takes like 15 seconds to read. If you don't write any of that down, all you have to go on, at least, you know, I mean, unless you can remember a lecture in your own head, uh, you know, a week, two weeks, three weeks later, uh, you know, uh, with no notes, then all you have is the, the, are the bullet points, uh, the, the 15 seconds of things that are already written down. But if you keep kind of keep your head down, not all the time, I'm going to look at the slides a little bit, uh, but sort of listen to what I'm saying, you know, reading between the lines, uh, uh, then you have pages and pages of notes on George Washington or on that unit or ever, along with the PowerPoint slides, because if there's a PowerPoint slide that says George Washington, and he's on the study guide, as he certainly will be, uh, then you're responsible for anything that I say in class about George Washington, not just what's literally specifically on the PowerPoint slides or in the textbook. You're responsible for my lecture, uh, which goes beyond just the PowerPoint slides. Class conduct, also a sampling uh, from the syllabus. Uh, all this covers a lot of it, but uh, I'm not going to read through this. Uh, I don't want to be a downer here uh, right at the beginning, but we do have to have some rules uh, and we have to act uh, uh, professionally. Uh, and so uh, I expect that you will. If not, uh, discipline a disciplinary actions may have to be taken. Uh, it's worth looking at the Netiquette website uh, because uh, for many people, doing things online at least college coursework online uh, is something new. Uh, and uh, people need to understand that there's sort of uh, rules about not just you know how to get things done, but how to interact with other people uh, in ways uh, that are acceptable uh, and you know, considered professional uh, college-level conduct. With that being said, uh, again, I welcome everybody. Uh, yet again, uh, expect a lot more things to start popping up. Uh, and tomorrow will be mainly a day of getting our bearings, uh, as I said. Uh, but the day after that, uh, uh, we're going to hit the ground running uh, for sure. Take care.